This video is presented by EA Game Changers. Here we are, freelancer. You ready to jump in? Yes, I am. Well, then, let's not keep that big bad world waiting. Our contract is to locate an arcanist named Matthias. Saturn has given us the last location where he made contact. If I am a fan of Bioware games, will I like Anthem? If you asked yourself something along this line, well, my friend, we got a lot to talk about. Hi, Ash here. Nice to see you again. A month ago, Bioware and EA were kind enough to fund my trip to Sweden so I could head over to the EA Dice Studios big building that's there to check out an early build of Anthem. And today I'm finally able to talk about it. I'm sure at this point, most of my fellow compatriots, influencer peoples who were there are chatting up Anthem. Weapon damage, javelin, effectiveness, tech top combos. That's all fine. But for me, I'm not a shooter looter gal. I'm not from the Destiny community. I haven't tried Warframe. The last raids I ever did were in Burning Crusade for World of Warcraft. Uh, my main jams, what I really care about, are story and characters. I played everything between Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect Andromeda and would be what's considered a modern day Bioware core fan. And judging by those who stuck around for so long, and thank you by the way, it's very likely that most of you were, or are, a fan of Bioware's games. And so, we're here. I've played Anthem, a fair five hours in of an earlier build that's probably, well, it'll probably change before release. But regardless, the question still remains. If you are a fan of Bioware games, will you like Anthem? And the answer is, ah, it depends. My idea of what makes a Bioware game a, well, Bioware game may be very different from you. I focus on characters and story, but there's also crafting, customization, it's not in this game, but romance, decision making, player, character agency, there's a lot of factors here, but I feel like we can sort it out together. What do you look for in a Bioware game? What makes you want to play one? What makes it worth your time. What you'll see from me in these upcoming weeks leading up to Anthem's release is answering these questions, and eventually the overall question of, will you like Anthem? It's not my job to make you pre-order the game, it's not my duty or anything like that to make you buy or even be interested in the game. What I personally enjoy is sharing what I know so that you can make informed decisions with your wallet and time and mind. I also like making sure that, well, Bioware stays on their toes and makes better design decisions as the years goes on. This time, we're talking about how it works to play Anthem as a solo player in, well, an online only multiplayer world. While Dragon Age and Mass Effect introduced multiplayer into their games, Bioware games traditionally are enjoyed alone. Anthem is the first online-only cooperative-focused game Bioware's made. How will it fare with the core audience? Let's establish the groundwork. So, what you're watching is me playing through the Lost Arcanist mission early into the story. As an interceptor, by far the best javelin and Probably the only javelin I will ever play from here on out. <laughs> How this run is pretty simple. If you've watched Bioware's previous live streams, you've, I believe, already seen the beginning. You and your cypher partner Owen head to your javelin, and then you realize you got bamboozled into meeting an Omega Weird Corvus spy named Taslin. She wants you to find an Arcanist researcher named Matthias, because he's probably bleeding and dying in a ditch somewhere. Simple, clean-cut mission. We just started the beginning of your freelancer story, so you just took off your training wheels. You're getting used to jumping, flying, not dying. Now, since you're checking out this vid, you may be less interested about javelin comparisons, weapon combos, loot tables, all that nitty-gritty. And you might be more invested in the characters we meet, and in this case, rescue. 
That's fair. It's, well, that's what Bioware is strong at. And so far, I'm a fan of the, how the flow of this game works. Okay, let me just draw it out for you. You have your critical path mission, your main mission, which is, in this case, the Lost Arcanist quest we're on right now. You finish that up, rewards in hand, and then you head back to your hub, which is Fort Tarsus. At this point, you can jump right back in to the critical path, or you can, you know, explore the city a little, or a lot, depending on how far into the story you are. Talk to the townsfolk, maybe other freelancers, take in the scenery. And once you're done with talking to as many people as you want, or that is available, or you're done with fulfilling any of the quests, you can head back onto the critical path. Now, one of the questions I've had a lot on this game in previous videos is, how is Anthem as a solo player? Should I try doing quests with others? And something along those lines. From what I played, well, it works. The characters I've met so far and one of ones are interesting, believable in the world. The game offers different difficulty levels, and for me, whenever I was playing on normal in this build, it was a really good balance between face rolling and <laughs> yelling literal f-bombs at my monitor. I am so sorry, guys, that were on EA. <laughs> You'll likely become way more attached to Fort Tarsus, as all the characters you want to meet are there. What I predict will be an actual problem for core fans is balancing the idea of playing with other people, the main thing behind Anthem's and the Freelancer's whole strong alone, strong together motto, and having that with playing alone and experiencing and really eating at Anthem's story. While the critical path flows through your adventures in and around the world. From what I've seen, character growth mainly shines in the fort. I sense it will be a more enriching experience after every mission, probably after every main mission. You stop into the fort and you clear every conversation and activity before you jump back into the main story. Obviously, this might be a problem if you have a friend on Discord or VoIP yelling in your ear to hurry up. If you're dead set on playing as a solo player, well, you'll be fine, of course. Playing alone seems very doable if you take your time in between missions to absorb what's going on while the story progresses. Or at least that's how I felt whenever I played it. As far as the world outside the walls... Whew, okay, so this mission's pacing reminded me of how it felt to play as a solo player in Star Wars The Old Republic where you're supposed to be having these social spaces, this time in between, uh, but instead you get a lot of moments of silence, less fun and more grind. Let me explain. In Tor, there are hubs where you have personal one-on-one -on face-to-face conversation with NPCs, standard Bioware stuff, good stuff. But in order to progress those relationships along, you have to go outside, kill some baddies, and get work done. And the spaces in between these hubs are massive. The whole kill some baddies, get work done part tends to be really, really daunting and really quiet when you're a solo player. Where if you're not playing with others in this, well, massively multiplayer online game, you kind of go through the motions to get to point A to point B and then you forget where the fun is. Well, just in case we didn't know, Anthem is also an always online multiplayer game. Okay, it's not massively multiplayer, but come on. Uh, still under the same developer name. But thankfully, there is a noticeable difference. While you do have to go outside, you have to kill some baddies and get work done, even if you don't have a friend or some random, rando, scrando, 12 year old on the mic yelling in your ear, you have a cool guy, Cypher, named Owen along for the ride. And he goes around and he's like, oh, check this beacon. Oh, everyone's dead. Please kill stuff. Good job. You're a gravity killing monster and other nice, accusations, and so on and so forth. You feel a lot less alone in the world because of him, and while being outside isn't nearly as reactive as being in Fort Tarsus, his presence 
fills a lot of the silence. I can't tell yet whether we'll eventually tire of him or if there's enough lines for him to not sound like he's just regurgitating phrases, but for the time being, and you can hear this if you listen to the game in the back, or maybe I'll add a clip, I personally enjoy the company. So, does Anthem look like a good game to play as a solo player at the moment? Yeah, it looks like it. Again, what I haven't played isn't the final product and may, will, possibly, maybe, most likely change greatly before the release because what I played was definitely an alpha hat. But, however, it does look like it's trending positively, so if you're playing to play by yourself. Uh, just remember, however, that technically this game is supposed to be a cooperative multiplayer experience. But at the same time, for me, if I or another player is struggling between doing missions side by side with friends and experiencing the story and its effects on the fort by themselves, what's the better play? Or can we enjoy any of it? Can we have both and be satisfied? Who knows? In the next vid, we'll take a look at more factors and more Anthem, explaining gameplay in more detail and how it may or may not be relevant to your interests. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions what you are seeing in this video or what we have taught today, let me know in the comments or join the BW Outpost community on Discord. Link is in the description. I hang out there. There's also an Anthem part that you can ask questions if you like. And sometimes I pop in there and I say, hey, I know something. And I can actually talk about it now. Uh, also, you can find me and other Bioware fans there, and we'll be having our first meetup at PAX South next week. I might actually go if it pans out, so hope to see you there. Details are in the Discord. Feel free to join us. Link is in the description. I'm out. I'm tired, and I need to go to sleep. Like, subscribe for more, but most importantly, even if you do, don't do any of those. Thank you for watching. I'll be on Twitch later this week to do non-Bioware things, so feel free to catch a live stream by following my channel there, twitch.tv slash ash, A-S-H-E. In any case, see you soon, and as always, Fenerel and Ansel.